In this video, I'll show you how to create fully formatted and well-researched blog posts that can be posted directly to Shopify. All you have to do is enter in a keyword into an Airtable base, and this automation will take care of the entire process. It will create Flux1 images, a well-formatted post, a key takeaways section with bolding, including a relevant YouTube video, in-content images, internal linking to other blog posts or products on your store, and citing sources. We're using Anthropic Cloud for this instead of ChatGPT because we feel that the writing is much better from it. When the post is generated, it's also going to draft a bunch of social media text. And when you're happy with that, you can move the status to push to socials. The automation will go through that flow and then publish that post to as many social networks as you want. Once you have this set up, you could even make this more sophisticated by integrating a RAG system like Daniel has explained in this video, where he's grounding the AI in all of the product data in an e-commerce store. I'll talk about that a little bit later. It's not specifically made for Shopify, but you could work off that as an example. If you want to get instant access to this blueprint and import it to your make.com account, then check out the link in the description to our community. We'll get access to all of our blueprints, including this one, as well as courses and other resources. The end result here is a blog post directly uploaded to your Shopify store. It's perfectly formatted here and you can edit this however way you want. You can choose to auto publish these by default, but it's better to put them into draft mode, edit them, and then publish from there. So how does this system work? Before getting started with this automation, I'd highly recommend that you check out the video linked in the card above and in the description. This is our most recent WordPress automation that this automation was based on. And in this video, I've adapted that. The only difference is that we were publishing the blog post to WordPress instead of Shopify. But there are quite a few changes that are required to get this working for Shopify, which is why I've created a separate automation. But I go through the core of how this automation works a lot more in that video. But at a high level, I'll just explain how it works here. This automation works in two different modes. It can either create an article outline upfront, or it can do it automatically when generating the article. In the first mode, we have this ready for outline status. When it's in the ready for outline status, when the automation runs, it goes through this route, I'll zoom in a bit there, and it calls perplexity, which has live access to the web. And this is a great tool, which we feed it the article title, and it will then create a summary of the facts and figures and insights for that article that should be covered within the article. We then use Claude to further refine that article outline, as you see here, and then we update the record to outline created. When it's in this outline created status, you can go in and edit this outline before the article is generated. Otherwise, when you have your article title ready, you can just move it straight to ready for article generation and it will create that outline directly within that process and just skip this section entirely. So when it's in this ready for article generation state, we've set these variables at the start. We have the model name that we're using for Claude. We have the Shopify blog URL and the Shopify sitemap URL. So if you're using the blueprint directly within the community, these are the main things that you should change upfront. Then it goes through this process. The first thing it's going to do is to crawl your sitemap, which is used to pick up relevant internal links for the article. To look at your sitemap, just type sitemap.xml to the end of your store URL, and you'll see there's a bunch of different sitemaps. I'm going to select the blogs one, and there you go. That's the blog post sitemap that it can crawl directly. Otherwise, you can use the alternate version of the automation where you can just manually dump a bunch of links that you want the AI to consider when write in the article. So you could dump in a bunch of different posts and products and whatever other links that you want potentially to internally link to within the post. So again, there are two different approaches to how we're getting sitemap links, either by crawling the sitemap or you can just manually dump them into Airtable. Again, check the video in the description where I explain that a bit more detail as we're working through the WordPress automation. Next up, we're going to grab all the URLs from that particular sitemap file. And this is a highly efficient way of doing this within Make without having to resort to iterators and aggregators, which can use a lot of operations and be quite complex. So this is just getting all of the URLs as you see here, and then just joining them all together into one long string. We're then asking Claude, to pick three URLs from that URL list that's relevant for the topic. After that, if this article outline has been created, i.e. if it was created in this first section, then it will just take that article outline and move on with the scenario. If there's no article outline created here, i.e. if you just went straight to ready for article generation without going to ready for outline, then the outline will be blank and then it will go through perplexity and search for relevant 
facts, figures, and insights similar to what it did here. Either way, the end result is that we get an article outline and that there's an article outline for this AI to work with to create the blog post. From there, we're extracting sources that we can add to the end of the article. Now we need to grab the media from the article before putting all of that into the AI to write the article. So we need to get this internal content image as well as this YouTube video. To get high quality Flux One images, we're using the file.ai service within this automation. We're using the make a request module. We have this URL, we have the authorization and the key. Instead of adding the article title, we're first calling Claude to try and classify that topic and to, to simplify it a bit. Again, we've talked about this loads of times within our automation, but we tend to use this image prompt helper to simplify our prompts to minimize the noise that goes into the image generator and it can sometimes just result in kind of better images. Flux One is very good at being able to create very good images from simple prompts. So that's what we are doing here. Unfortunately, make.com does not have a native function to escape JSON or to escape characters that could cause problems within a request like this, which is why I have this big bunch of horrible nested replace statements. The only thing that you really care about here is that we are adding in this text response from the image prompt helper. But other than that, we have this big list of replace statements that's just going to remove those unnecessary characters. I'm going to parse that response. From there, we generate the content image. And we then, after that, we get the content image. File.ai responds with a URL for us to grab. We then use the get a file module within make.com to actually get that image and to get the binary data for that image. If you're building out this automation yourself, and if you do not have advanced make.com experience, and if you do not have development experience, then I would recommend that you could just skip these sections entirely. That would result in you not having this in content image, but you will be able to get everything else in the article, including this featured image. So if you're building this yourself, and if you want to get an automation up and running, I would highly recommend just skip this section entirely and then come back to it afterward when you're happy enough with the rest of the automation. Just take it step by step. Following on from that, I'm gonna skip this section for the moment and come back to it later on in the video because it is quite advanced. Next up, we want to get a YouTube video and we're using the Data for SEO API, similar to how we did it in the previous video. Again, have a look at that video if you want to see exactly how that's done. But again, we just requested this endpoint. We have the request content in this exact format. Then after that, we're going to pass this into Claude to choose a YouTube video from that list. From there, we should have a valid YouTube link that we can then add to the article. Then we have this really long write an article prompt. And most of this is the exact same as the previous automation. Apart from this section, on WordPress, if you just add a YouTube URL direct in plain text to the post, it will auto embed. That does not work for Shopify. We have this logic where we're actually manually constructing the iframe, as you see it here. And then we're replacing the YouTube watch link with a YouTube embed link. So you can pause that video if you want to copy that out. Other than that, all of the article prompt is the same as our previous WordPress automation, apart from the in-content images, which we'll go through in a while. Finally, we're going to call file.ai to generate a featured image. The featured image is what you see here. This is actually really easy to upload. So this is one that you could do on your first pass of creating this scenario. And again, it's the same as what we did in the other automation. We'll get that file after it's been created. And then we go to Shopify. So Shopify, create an article. To create a Shopify connection, just type Shopify, select more. And then I'm gonna type in an article, create an article. And then type in your subdomain. So that's your Shopify subdomain. I'm just working off a test site here which is this. So if your Shopify URL is like that, then you would enter in XYZ. In my case, this is the test Shopify store that I'm working with. Then you press save and it's auto verified my connection from there. If you have not created a connection before, then it will probably come up with a pop-up and then you need to authorize that connection. But in my case, because I've done it before, it auto connected. So here you select your blog category. I'm selecting the title direct from the Airtable. And then here we're passing the overall create an article, which was this write an article. Then I have some replace statements here to get rid of some unnecessary HTML. Then at the very end, there's this 89 text response, and that's the sources section, which was all the way back here. And then we're just adding that in so it appears at the bottom of the article. And then for image, so that's a featured image that you see at the very top of the screen here. And we're passing in the data from this get a file request, which is 40 here, and the alt text 
for the alt text, that's the alternative text for the image, we're adding in this text response from the image prompt helper earlier on. So that was the prompt helper. That was the call to Claude to simplify the article title that would then be passed into file.ai. So I'm passing in this text response. And again, this is just that horrible set of nested replace statements to clean up the text so that it will not result in errors and press OK. As a result of that, you should then see an article uploaded to Shopify like you see here. But that's not the only thing we do. Like in the other automation, we're passing this to Claude again to summarize the main article points. And then we have four different calls to Claude here to create text for each of the social networks that we want to push and share this article later. After that, we're going to update our Airtable record with the article link, which is so that's the Shopify blog URL. We will receive back the handle, which is the URL of the Shopify blog post. We'll upload the featured image, like you see here, direct to Airtable so that you'll be able to see it from that. And then that will be used later on when we decide to push these to the social networks and then press OK. As a result of that, you would have everything in this article apart from this in-content image. Now let's tackle the creation and uploading of this in-content image and then add in that to the blog post. So what do we want to do here? We want to generate a content image from file.ai. We want to get that image upload it to Shopify, and then just get a public URL back. Now you would think this is a pretty easy task, especially seeing as it was really, really easy to upload a featured image. But unfortunately, there is no native way to do this in make.com from what I could see. And Shopify are moving forward with using GraphQL as a method to interact with them programmatically. So I'm using this GraphQL API to upload and fetch the image. Unfortunately, it's really complicated. Again, if you're downloading this blueprint from the community, this will all be set up for you up front and you should not have to do anything. Otherwise, I'm gonna quickly go through all the settings for each of the modules so that you can try to mimic these settings. So to actually ac to access the Shopify API from make.com, you need to go to apps and then app and sales channels, then select develop apps. From there, you need to press create an app at the top right. You can call this app anything, make.com app, let's say. There's not a whole lot you need to do here, but you just need to go into your configuration, go to configure. I selected read and write files as a scope for this, but you can check whatever scopes you need. Once you've selected those scopes that are needed for your integration, then select install app at the top right and select install. Then select reveal token once and copy that out and store it in a safe place. As is standard with these kind of API tokens, they're only ever shown once. From there, right click, add a module and go to Shopify. And at the very, very, very end, then you see this make a GraphQL API call. It's gonna connect that automatically. You're gonna to need to add a connection. So go to Shopify custom and private apps, add in your domain. So if it's xyz at myshopify.com, then add in XYZ and add in your admin API access token here and press save. From there, you should be able to make GraphQL API calls to Shopify. You might be wondering why it takes so many modules to upload a single image to Shopify. Their GraphQL API is simply just a lot more complex than their REST API. The GraphQL API is what they're moving forward with. It's what I'm using here. Before we move on, I've added this separate module as a variable just to clean up the text response. So this is the image prompt that we're getting back. The article title was the history of the iron sweater and the text response here is traditional Irish knitwear. So this is a simplified prompt for that. I've decided to actually create a separate variable here just to clean up that. That's the JSON escaping that I talked about earlier. Just this horrible set of nested replace statements. We're gonna use that later on in this automation. So we generate the content image as we've talked about earlier. We get the content image result from that. And that means we have the content image in binary. From there on Shopify's servers, we need to actually stage the upload. I'm not going to be explaining every single aspect of this. So just pause the video as we're going through it if you need to copy out what you see here. So we have this query in this exact format along with the variables. A mutation in GraphQL is an operation that modifies data. And in this case, we're asking it to stage an upload. We'll be passing in an image, a file name, the file type and the method we're gonna use. We're not actually uploading the file data within this. We send this request and Shopify will respond with a bunch of different parameters that we then need to pass in to our next request as we're uploading the file. So we press okay. In this next module, we're making a request. So we're making a post request and we're selecting the URL that was returned from this. Shopify are providing us with an exact URL to hit in order to upload the image. Then we select multi-part form data and then we need to provide all the parameters that they provided previously. Shopify have provided us with a bunch of different parameters that we need to provide to this request, which is what we're doing here. 
So we're adding each of these in. We have the key name, the value, field types of text. So there are, there are nine different parameters here. In item 10 here, we're gonna provide the actual file. I'm gonna get rid of this and provide the image file name because I've already done that here, which is to kind of separately just move out that logic to clean up the file name so we don't overcomplicate this as much. So here we select in file, the key for that is file. We're gonna map the actual file data from this get a file module here, and then we'll press okay. So this request is gonna return with a response like so. We need to take this data item and then parse that XML because we need to get the XML data from it. So here I believe we have a temporary file created on the Shopify servers. We then need to pass it to this request to create that file that then we can then use in our blog post. So we have this mutation of file create. Everything is on screen there apart from that last curly bracket, but you can just copy this out as you see it here. So you can just pause the video. The operation is file create. We have a collection, a variable data source, and here we're providing the alt text, the content type, and the original source. So this is the original location of that temporary file that was uploaded. We press okay. Unfortunately, that's still not enough because it creates this file, but it can take a few seconds for that to register on Shopify servers before you can actually get a public URL that we can use in our blog post. So we have this separate sleep tool of delay of 20 seconds. After that, we're then going to request the public URL that we can finally use within our blog post. So again, that's another GraphQL API call. We're using this query of get files. We just want to get one file back and then the variables are like so. I needed to tweak that slightly to just get rid of this GID section from the start. This is working perfectly for me on the basis that these IDs map. If it is not working for you, then you would need to tweak this automation a little. From that then, I just have this other variable to get that image SRC, which is the source URL for that image that we can then finally pass in to our blog post. Everything after that, we've already gone through, which is to get the YouTube SERPs and so on. Finally, within this write article, create a prompt, we're just passing in this content image URL that we finally just got a second ago. So the result of that will be this in content image that you see here. Once that article has been pushed to Shopify, you'll get this article generated status. Then you'll see some Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn posts. This is the initial text that you can tweak however way you like. If you do not like this text, if it's not your style, then you can go into this prompt and each of these prompts and really laser focus the prompt in here and tweak it to your style. When you're ready to then publish that post to social media, select push to socials, and then the automation will run through this route and will get that image file, the featured image, and push it to each of the social networks that you have configured for this. So you can set whatever social networks you want. And we have a bunch of different videos on our channel that go through how to connect to some of these social networks because the process varies a bit from each of them. So check out the link in the description to that. And we also have lots of support in our community for that as well. If you want to create an even more sophisticated version of this system, you could combine this automation that I've created with this no code rag system that Daniel has created on our channel as well. Check out the link in the description to that too. In this case, you could load all the product data from your entire store into a vector database and then use that when generating your article because it would greatly ground the AI directly within your product data. It's certainly a more complex use case. Daniel has explained how to create a RAG system using your own embeddings. And he also has another video on how to create an OpenAI assistant and load data to that. Again, both of those are more complex scenarios. I'd recommend that you get up and running with this automation first before tackling a topic like that. But you could create a highly impressive system by combining these two automations together. So I hope this automation has been helpful. I found this relatively easy to adapt some of this process to Shopify, but adding those in content images was definitely a bunch of extra steps that I did not expect up front. But it's in this automation, it's working, and hopefully you'll get some use out of it. If you were confused at how all of these sections worked within this automation, then make sure to check out the link in the description to our previous video on uploading to WordPress because we went through each of these in a lot more detail. If you want to get way ahead and import this blueprint to your make.com account, then check out the link in the description to our community. We'll get access to all of our automations, including the one in this video. We have excellent tech support within our community, and we also have weekly events where you can ask us questions in real time. Thanks for watching.